Recently, I noticed that I own quite a few single board computers, which includes three Raspberry Pis. The only problem is that I rarely use them for electronics projects, which means they just sit around collecting dust. So in order to change that, let's go on an educational journey, in which we will find out how easy it is to control the GPIOs of Raspberry Pi, and whether it can truly replace an Arduino development board. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. PCBs from JLC PCB are entirely tested via 400 flying probe testers and 10 AOI machines. Upload your Gerber files to order 10 professional PCBs for only $2. First off, we have to decide which incarnation of Raspberry Pi we will use. I went with the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B since it is the newest version that I own. Next, we need a microSD card. I inserted it into a computer, downloaded the newest version of Raspbian, unzipped it and installed it onto the microSD card with the Win32 disk imager software. Afterwards, I inserted the microSD card into the Pi, connected a keyboard and mouse through USB as well as a screen through an HDMI cable, and powered up the system with a 5V phone charger. At this point, the Raspberry Pi will configure the operating system, and after staring at a black screen for 2 minutes, I was greeted with the usual desktop. Now here began the confusing part for me, since I had no idea what programming language to use and how to execute the written codes, but let's start basic. For programming, the two most common languages for the Raspberry Pi are Python and C. And since the Arduino programming language is more or less simplified C, let's stick to the C language for our first pieces of codes. To start with, I opened the terminal and typed in man gpio, which opened the manual for the gpio tool of the wiring pi library, which means it was already installed. WiringPy is a pin-based GPIO access library written in C, which is mandatory for our codes. So feel free to visit its website for more information about it or how to install it if it is not pre-installed on your version of Raspbian. Anyway, now we could create a new file, give it a .c file name, open it with a text editor and basically start coding but it wouldn't quite feel right if we compare it to the Arduino with its nicely color-coded IDE software. So let's rather go ahead and instead utilize the pre-installed Genie IDE to write our codes. After creating a new .c file, we must firstly include the wiring pi library. And after declaring the pin number and creating the main void function, we have to initialize the library by using one of those three commands. The difference between them is the pin numbering of the GPIOs. If we once again use the terminal, we can execute the previously discovered read all command from the manual and thus see the different pin numbering scheme of the three systems. I went with the Broadcom GPIO pin numbering for my codes and continued by utilizing the pin mode function, digital write function and delay function to create a simple blink codes. Disregarding the fact that there is no setup or loop section, but only a main void section that we must manually loop with a never ending while construct, such code syntax should be familiar to anyone who used Arduino before, or anyone who watched my Arduino 101, 102 and 103 video series. To use the code though, we must firstly open the set build commands and add the wiring pi library to the compile and build segment and add the sudo command to the execute section. Next, we can click the build icon and once that process was complete, we can click the execute icon, which brings up a new terminal window. That means it was time to connect the ground and the utilized GPIO pin to an LED with current limiting resistor on a breadboard. And as you can see, the blink codes worked without a problem. In this case, the only difference to an Arduino circuit 
is that the Raspberry Pi uses 3.3 volts voltage levels instead of the 5 volt voltage levels of an Arduino. Next, let's add an input to our code, which once pressed turns on the previously utilized GPIO pin. And as you can see, the Raspberry Pi not only offers pull up resistors, just like the Arduino, but also offers pull down resistors, which is a useful feature to have. Anyway, after building slash executing the code and adding a push button to the circuit and wiring it up, we can once again confirm that the code works fine. As a last example, let's set one of the four available PWM pins as a PWM output and create a PWM signal with a 50% duty cycle. After executing the code and hooking up the assigned GPIO pin to the oscilloscope, we can observe the correct PWM signal, which even offers a high frequency of 300 kHz. To adjust the duty cycle, let's add a potentiometer as an analog input to the circuit, which brings me to the two problems of the Raspberry Pi considering the programming. There are no included timers and no ADC, which means no precisely timed events and no measuring of analog voltages. Now don't get me wrong, since the Raspberry Pi supports UART, I2C and SPI, we can easily add an external ADC. And since many of the Arduino commands and even a couple new helpful ones are included, the Raspberry Pi can almost be considered an Arduino substitute. But Arduino projects, which only require a minimum of data processing, are not the main field of application for Raspberry Pi. Which brings me to Python. As you can see here, it is also a programming language that is supposedly very beginner friendly. But of course, for someone like me who used C all his life, I will need some time to get used to it. It can basically execute all functions that the C language offers, but it also comes with so called Python packages. By searching for Raspberry Pi with the Python package index, we can find a few dozens of awesome modules that we could easily implement in our own code. Including a 2D plotting package or a package that can do FFT, signal and image processing. What I'm trying to say is that the Arduino is the way to go for more straightforward electronics projects. But when it comes to more data excessive projects like a smart mirror or the mapping of an unknown environment, the Raspberry Pi is the way to go. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned a thing or two about the C and Python language. Also, let me know what Raspberry Pi projects you would like to see in the future on this channel. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.